Imagine you are living in Zimbabwe in November of 2008. You need trillions of dollars to buy anything, and because of the current financial situation, you've lost your job, and all of the money you had is now worth next to nothing. And this problem is called hyperinflation, or when a currency inflates to the point that it is worth next to nothing. And this problem is a result of fiat currency. Fiat currency is a type of currency that is not backed by anything tangible like gold. A fiat currency is usually controlled by a central authority, or most usually a government, and a fiat currency has no real value other than as a number. And most currency at this time is fiat, and fiat currencies, of course, include the US and Canadian dollar. And in 20 years, it is very likely we will not be using the US and Canadian dollar along with hundreds of smaller currencies around the world. And to help us stop hyperinflation, we can learn from history as there have been many fiat currencies in history and, all, and almost none of them have lasted for very long. And soon I believe we will need to replace all fiat currency. Of course, the timeline on the widespread death of fiat currency is not yet known, and this event could happen in two years or in a hundred, but it will inevitably happen. Furthermore, I think that fiat currency will be replaced by cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency is a type of currency that is completely digital and has a specific production schedule. It is not controlled by a central authority, nor can a large amount of it be quickly created without a large amount of effort and money. And the oldest, most used, most talked about cryptocurrency is by far Bitcoin. While there are over 1,000 cryptocurrencies, more than 80% of traded and spent cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is mined in blocks, and each block is one equation, or hash, attached to it that looks like this. And what the computer program is looking for is a hexadecimal number that guesses numbers that are possible for the equation that is assigned to the block. And the owner of the computer that guesses the equation gets 25 bitcoins. But most miners will work in pools, meaning that many miners will work together in a grid. And they all guess at part of the equation. And if the team as a whole succeeds, the, at guessing the answer, each person gets a share of the wealth depending on how much work their hardware did. But a lot of people will just buy Bitcoin online from others and do no mining themselves whatsoever. Now, Bitcoin is still in the early adoption stage and because of its constant volatility, it is rarely used as a main source of currency or storage of currency. And most Bitcoin users, including myself, only use it because of how it is just an interesting idea. But what is undoubtedly needed is more support. And even though Bitcoin is currently not very stable, it will be much more stable with more support. Now, some people say that Bitcoin is like monopoly money. When in reality, the money that we use today is the monopoly money in that fiat currency is nothing more than a number on a slip of paper promising something. Whereas Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is like gold. And it's a limited production schedule and is not controlled by any central authority. Of course, there are other cryptocurrencies too, including Litecoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin, OneCoin, Feathercoin, Quarkcoin, BitUSD, etc. But none of them are nearly as valuable as Bitcoin, and many of them, unfortunately, are pump and dump schemes, which make money for a very small portion of users. And a pump and dump scheme is a form of stock fraud where a owner of a large amount of a currency or a stock controls the price of it by saying misleading, positive, or negative comments about it. And despite the many real problems surrounding cryptocurrency, the great thing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole is that when 
that it can help the underdeveloped and developed world combat hyperinflation and all the destabilizing effects hyperinflation can have upon economies. The main advantage of the use of cryptocurrencies would have in the underdeveloped world is that when it is more used, cryptocurrency will be more stable in price than other currencies. For example, in Ukraine there has been financial instability from their conflicts with Russia, and as a result, some people in the Ukraine have been using cryptocurrency for almost every financial transaction they've made because it is significantly more stable than their current fiat currency. And furthermore, hyperinflation often renders the pay and savings of ordinary people completely worthless. And when no one can assign an artificial value to a fiat currency or just print more fiat currency on a whim, you not only save the most vulnerable member in societies, usually the lowest class, but also the struggling middle class from financial instability. And in the developed world, the advantages of cryptocurrency are faster transactions and the eradication of age restrictions. And think about this. When you, in, when you deposit money into your bank account, it takes about 24 hours before you can use it on your own account for, mo for the majority of banks. And Bitcoin transactions take between 20 minutes and an hour. And all other cryptocurrencies can sometimes do it even faster. Also, for teens and adolescents, cryptocurrency can be also very useful in the developed world as there are no age restrictions unlike most bank accounts, thus giving teens the ability to control their financial futures. And to sum this up, cryptocurrency can help the underdeveloped and developed world by possibly helping eradicate poverty and providing everyone with a better financial system. Thank you.